So somehow we need to think of knowledge in terms of discovery and justification, of argument and counter-argument. How should we do this? Well, as a philosopher called John McDowell, he's based in Pittsburgh, where uh, another gentleman called Robert Brandom is based, um, and where a f an eminent philosopher, Sellers, Wilfred Sellers, was based. And uh, McDowell takes some of his thinking from Sellers. Um, the f the McDowell contrasted what he terms the space of reasons with the realm of natural law. And this is in his book, Mind and World. The realm of natural law is roughly the realm of propositional knowledge. For example, the laws of physics. But the space of reasons relates to that human space in which we ask for and give reasons. We have to justify and give an account of our beliefs. Whereas the realm of raw law is essentially causal and explanatory, the space of reasons is justificatory. Of course, if propositions in the realm of law become open to doubt, then they themselves would have to be justified within the space of reasons. Just one further point here, that for McDowell it's important that the space of reasons has some grip on the world. Not anything can count as a reason, and to think it can is to suppose that, that our belief systems can operate independently of how the world is. He calls this spinning in a void. So that would be the critique of relativist systems of thought. He thinks that we need to think of the world as constraining our beliefs. But it does not follow that in constraining our beliefs that they are outside of what is thinkable. So, for McDowell, experience never comes as just raw sense data, but as already conceptualised. So, a conceptualised experience does act as a constraint upon belief, which potentially can answer to the world's being thus and so. This is how the world is. Even if in practice I treat my beliefs as provisional and open to review, as would happen if it was subject to the space of reasons. Indeed, that I, that I do treat my beliefs as open to review is just what one would expect the moment those beliefs become part of the space of reasons. Um, McDowell thinks that we can become attuned to living in the space of reasons through the development of what he calls a second nature. This nature is not biological, but cognitive. So our first nature is biological, our second nature is a cognitive nature. And is ex exemplified by the way in which we conceptualise experience and justify our beliefs. It is a form of acculturation, and in this connection he also mentions and explicates the role of Bildung in the space of reasons. Bildung is a German concept of um, upbringing, of self-formation, of acculturation. So you can see that in McDowell's system, education has a role to play, which is not merely cultural and moral, but also epistemological. Because through learning, we learn to conceptualise the world, and in conceptualising the world, we experience the world differently from what we would do if we did not have this second nature. What we want is for our students to learn to live in the space of reasons. This means that not only do they know lots of content and stuff, but that they're also capable of justifying their beliefs and making judgments. Because what we really want to get our students to do is to make judgments and to get used to defending and criticising judgments. In that way, they may learn that knowledge doesn't come in neatly packaged bundles in textbooks, but is something difficult, not clear-cut. In addition, 
Making and defending judgments helps students to learn how to become responsible for those judgments so that they own those judgments. We can think of school, and university indeed, but also a school, as a place where the space of reasons prevails, even for young children. Sometimes they may come from homes where reasons aren't given. They just have to learn to obey. They're subject to the will of the parent. But in a school, at least in any school worth its name, the children learn that there is always a reason for what they're being asked to do. Maybe that reason can't always be given straight away. The child might be in danger, for example. But nevertheless, it can always be given later. The idea of making judgments in schools and universities is important because we want children and students to own their own beliefs, to take responsibility for what they believe in. But in a school environment, the consequences of getting it wrong are usually benign. But out in the real world, the consequences of getting it wrong, of course, are not always so benign. So, thinking now about assessment, we think of learning, if we think of learning and ask what we want students to learn, in some ways, and I'm simplifying here, the answer could be said to be fairly straightforward. One, basic theorems and information, plus a bunch of skills, technical skills perhaps, soft skills as they're called. Second, understanding of associated context, and I won't elaborate that, um, we all presumably recognise that facts and information have to be contextualised in order for understanding to take place. But finally, judgments, which I've already spoken about. Context is always important because understanding context tells us the extent to which students understand basic content. One of the problems with um, multiple questions is that it doesn't test, it doesn't ask for context. So if someone was to ask me, um, as if, if someone was to ask who is the Prime Minister of the UK and the answer was David Cameron, that answer would be correct. But if that person also thought that David Cameron had been born in a council house and went to a state school, it would show that they knew nothing about David Cameron, who actually came from a very privileged background. So context is everything. In the UK, there is much talk of threshold concepts. These are the concepts that you need to know in a particular discipline if your understanding is going to really take off. Lack of understanding of these threshold concepts can act as a bottleneck. But once one does understand a particular concept, a threshold concept, then the whole vistas open up. The idea is that each discipline is likely to have its set of own set of threshold concepts. So for exam in my experience, for example, in teaching educational theory, nearly all students, to begin with, have immense difficulty in seeing the intrinsic link between freedom and reason. For philosophers, it's easy. It's a basic Kantian insight. The powers of reason enable self-directedness in respect of appraising values and at determining one's purposes that provide the basic condition for freedom. But no amount of examples and case studies is ever enough for students to learn this. You just have to wait until the penny drops. Then they start to see the whole point of the Enlightenment and they start to see why the overused concept of freedom is so powerful when used properly. Another concept which I regard as a threshold concept in educational theory is the concept of knowledge itself. 
because the students naturally assume that knowledge simply consists of facts and basic propositions. But having um, mastered at least some of these threshold concepts, the big, um, and to be able to use them in the space of reasons, it is at that point they can start to make judgments about the limits of reason and the limits of freedom. So having understood the Kantian insight, maybe they can even come to question it even. Okay. Um, so my example there then of the freedom and reason as being a threshold concept and seeing the link between the two, once they have grasped it, then yes, for them the discipline does open up. They understand, for example, what we mean by the Enlightenment, the, uh, the European Enlightenment, for example. When we come to assess, we need to be clear in our minds what we are assessing. Are we assessing knowledge of content and context? Or are we assessing judgments and how well founded they are? When I listen to colleagues in higher education in the UK, I worry sometimes that their assessment strategies only cover content and its context. I worry sometimes that we don't really know how to assess judgments or to judge judgments, if you will. It is as if we are reluctant ourselves to let students enter the space of reasons in a full-blown way, and our reluctance is exemplified by, by our having assessment methods that play safe, that are risk-free. But you can see that once students start making judgments, then they are well out of the cave and right up there in the sunlit uplands of enlightenment. So the space of reasons is a modern philosopher's answer to the cave. For Plato, the cave is a bad place to be. And he favored what was essentially a contemplative style of knowledge and wisdom. Sometimes I think Plato was right, especially when I read dialogues like the Symposium. Plato has immense power and persuasiveness that reaches across the years and affects us today. Nevertheless, for us moderns, and I include by us moderns everyone who lives in the Indian subcontinent, I think the space of reasons is the place to be and where we need to be. For us, this space is the alternative to living in the cave. But in assessing judgments, we have to educate students into the art of making judgments, no matter what subject they are taking. We need them to understand that we don't just want to assess their knowledge of content and context. We have to educate them to take risks even if sometimes that doesn't pay off. Because students have to learn, and they must learn, what a bad judgment is. And the best way you can do that is by making some bad judgments yourself. The, um, educational practice and um, practical judgments is what a teacher, um, so to speak, is trained to make. Although, um, I'd question as to whether you can actually train someone to make a practical judgment, um, but, but it's certainly something you, learnt, you learn um, through practice and in company with a mentor and tutor and guide. Um, but as I said, the space of reasons operates um, not just at the level of theory, but also at the level of practice. Um, so uh, if the school is a space of reasons, then yes, I, I fully take on your point that it's a sp space of reasons in, 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 the, in the practical dimension of that. And that, um, uh, and that teacher education clearly needs to take that into account.